And now, from the Hollywood Palace, here is your host, the famous television and screen star, the fugitive himself, David Jensen! That's the end of the show. <laughs> Thank you very much. Good evening. You know, uh, hosting a variety show is a new experience for me. See, I don't sing and I don't dance. But if you've been watching my show, you know I'm uh, one heck of a runner. <laughs> I'm very happy to be your host tonight. We have a great show. In fact, it's so good I wouldn't even leave at the cops game. That's how good <laughs> Right now, I want you to meet the most famous basketball team in the world. Let's give them a royal palace welcome. The celebrated Harlem Globetrotters, right here. <laughs> Middle Lock Lemon. Yes. Tex Harrison. Fred Neal. Connie Hawkins. Bobby Joe Mason. J.C. Gibson. The referee, Riley Crystal. And now, we start to run. the show, uh, the Globetrotters are going to play the Hollywood Dribblers. And uh, it should be uh, quite a game. We've got uh, great All-Americans on the Dribblers. You know, we've got uh, Mel Brooks and Carl Reiner at forward. We've got Tim Conway and Vic Damone at the guards. In fact, it's one of the greatest teams ever assembled on any court. That's because they've all been in court many times. <laughs> Uh, I'm going to be in the game, too. Now I want you, want you to meet a very beautiful and glamorous young lady. She's here to sing for you, Miss Edie Adams. <laughs> Webster's Dictionary defines love as a, oh, a strong affection or liking for someone. Well, here are a few more thoughts on that universal subject. Love can be a snow-capped mountain. Love can be the truth. Love can be an endless fountain of youth. Love can be an evildoer. Love can be a lie. Love 
can make you wake tomorrow and sigh. It can be such ecstasy, but that kind is not very easy to find. Love can be a tinkling cymbal, love can be a dirge. Love may seem amusing, Almost never ever the same. You know, love is many things to many people. Oh, but when it's right, it's perfect. I live to love. I love to live with you beside me. This road so new, I'll muddle through with you to me. In this world, where so many. Hardly any say love. I'm glad there is you. someone to sing the blues. Good riddance. Goodbye. Every trick of his you are on to. But fools will be fools. And where's he Burn up tomorrow if he may turn. There's just no letter to live long nights. How'd you like to see the entire wardrobe of the fugitive? <laughs> this is it. Right here. <laughs> he went to great expense. Look, right now, it's my pleasure to present Tim Conway. He stars as Ensign Parker in McHale's Navy. Almost didn't get that out. McHale's Navy. It's a great show. Tonight, Tim is going to bring us his comedy classic, The Warden. So, uh, we'll go to the warden's office at Rocky River Honor Farm where there are no bars and no fences. The killers and the thieves are on their honor to stay on the grounds. And there had just been a prison break. <laughs> uh, 
I'd like to ask you a few questions, if I might. Um, how did uh, how did it feel to wake up this morning and find yourself face to face with thirty hardened criminals? <clears throat> oh, thirty. Well, uh, there are only nine this morning. <laughs> I thought there were thirty. Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, uh, <laughs> good riddance to bad rubbish, I say. <laughs> you mean to say that? 21 men escaped by time? Well, we don't like to say escaped around here, Dave. We just oh. uh, <laughs> say they're away. <laughs> That's a little frightening, isn't it? I mean, those, those killers on the loose, does that happen? Uh, does that happen very often? Well, uh, only since we took the fences down. Uh, <laughs> see, there's uh, nothing here to keep them, so uh, they just uh, split. So I thought they were supposed to be on their honor. Yeah, well, you think they would be. <laughs> After all, I put a little trust in them. Yeah. <laughs> Look, uh, tell me, uh, Warden, is there any chance of getting these men back? Well, I sure hope so. I got 40 acres of winter wheat to get in. <laughs> this will be the third year in a row. I had to do it by myself. <laughs> I think I'm going to quit putting up those duty rosters. Uh, and they just look at them and take off. I see. Uh, I knew you would. <laughs> uh, listen. There. What facilities do you, do you have for the men at Rocky River? Well, uh, we have uh, 160 acres that they farm and uh, 30 head of cattle, and uh, we have the handicraft center and uh, the gunsmith shop. The gunsmith shop? Yeah. Uh, they voted to put it in last year. <laughs> While I was on vacation. Uh, but, uh, don't get us wrong, uh, they just repair guns. I see. Where did they get the gun? Uh, they were making them in handicraft. <laughs> whole bunch of them there. <laughs> well, you know, it's, uh, I know it's not funny, but listen, I've got to ask you, how long have you been the warden of Rocky River, you know? Uh, I've been uh, the warden about 11 years. <laughs> I took office right after uh, Warden Riley was shot. <laughs> oh, that's a, that's a shame. I'm sorry to hear he was shot, but... He shot by a notorious uh, gunman? Uh, oh, no, no. Uh, he wasn't shot. He was shot. I don't understand. Well, he was 74 years old. He was shot. <laughs> of course, uh, I'm kind of glad he retired anyway. Uh, he was kind of getting to be the laughing stock of the honor farm. Yeah. How was that? Well, Warden Riley uh, never believed in carrying a real gun when he was out with the men, so uh, he had a little gun carved out of wood he used to carry. And uh, one day the inmates found out about it and took it away from him and burned it. <laughs> <laughs> That's embarrassing. Yeah, well, that wasn't the worst part. Uh, right after that, they decided to pull a prison break, and uh, about 16 of them took off, and there was old Warden Riley running after him, yelling bang, bang, and throwing ashes there. <laughs> wasn't that funny at the time? No, I didn't. <laughs> One of your coats. No. <laughs> Keep up the pace, Dave. Right. Just... <laughs> Tell me, Warden. <laughs> Do you mingle with the men? <laughs> I'm sorry, I didn't hear you, Dave. <laughs> Yes, I do. <laughs> Wait a minute. With the, with the inmates. Yes, I do. Yes. Uh, I'm not afraid to get out there with them, uh, Dave. Uh, of course, some people would be afraid, but uh, I'm an expert in karate, so it doesn't bother me. Yeah. Oh, that's wonderful. Would, could, would you? I mean, would you give us a demonstration of your Boy, karate? I was hoping you'd yeah. ask. Uh, yeah, I uh, just happen to have one of my practice boards here with me. If you take a look at that, that's oh, yeah. uh, three-quarter ply. Yes, it is. Heavy, sturdy wood. I'll just, uh, you want to hold that up hold there? Hold that, yeah. Give you an idea of what they're up against. This is how you can take care of a man. Single blow to this board can break it right in half. Right. Right. Ready? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Ha! Ha! <laughs> that's uh, that's three-quarter ply. Yes. Just hold it right there. Thank you very much, uh, Warden. Uh, I think you're... Uh, uh, no, that's not... No. <laughs> Thank you very much, Warden. Well,
You're a very brave man to face all these contract, uh, convicts. You're a credit to your society. Well, actually, uh, when I first came here at Rocky River, I established that I was the head man. I uh, was Mr. Tough with the guys, and uh, it's the only language you understand. Just a minute, there's the phone. <laughs> I gotta get it fixed. <laughs> Hello. Hello. Warden Herford here. Yes. <clears throat> oh, put him eye on. Hello, killer? Yes. No, look, killer, I told you it's set for nine o'clock. No, there's nothing we can do now. I don't care how you plead. No, you gotta come to you. It's nine o'clock. I'm sorry, killer. Well, who is that? That's kind of an unpleasant task. It's one of the convicts. Well, I, I understand that. You put that tough policy to work there, didn't you? Right. What did he want? Uh, he wanted to know what time I was going to bring him his breakfast. So I... <laughs> and now, uh, those international recording stars who have come 10,000 miles to entertain you tonight. The natives of Madagascar, and they're all under five feet tall. It's true. Little people with big talent. Ladies and gentlemen, Lacer. Welcome back to the second half of tonight's show. I'd like to introduce you to two gentlemen who have been on the Hollywood Palace time and time and time and time again. Twice. <laughs> Kyle Reiner and Mel Brooks. Ladies and gentlemen, David, as you know, tax time is soon upon us, and oh, we're yeah. very fortunate yeah. to have secured the services of one of the great tax men in this country, oh, Mr. Philip J. Heinker. Mr. Heinker. Oh, yeah. Mr. Heinker. How do you do? How do you do, sir? I'm sure you'll find Mr. Heinker's uh, tax talk very, very edifying. Oh, good. Can I be edified over there? We'd prefer it. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Mr. Heinker... I know his face. Yes. Well, <laughs> Mr. Heinker, if you can get on to your book... Yes. Yeah. Uh, by the way, I believe my name is Henker. H-E-N-K-E-R, Henker. You pronounce it Henker? Well, that's what they call me, Henker. Well, it's, it's spelled with an I in it. H-E-I-N-K-E-R. Yeah, it is, isn't it? Yes. Well, maybe it's Henker, then. <laughs> All right. Yeah, All right. Um, Mr. Henker, yeah. you've written this remarkable book on taxes entitled The Agony and the Ecstasy. Yeah. Now, it's had a, a strange title since uh, Mr. Irving Stone has used that title for his book on Michelangelo. No, au contraire, my dear Fair. I believe that Mr. Stone... <laughs> 
Uh, Mr. Stone's title uh, in the Michelangelo book is The Agony and the Ecstasy. Isn't that his title? No, his, his title is The Agony and the Ecstasy. Then my title is obviously The Agony and the Ecstasy. That's my title. No, it says right here, The Agony and the Ecstasy. Well, then I'm Henker. They've got it all mixed up. <laughs> I'll call you Hanker, then. Your name is Hanker. Hank, Hanker. Hank, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Do you, Philip J. Honker, take this woman to be your lawful... It's Honker. <laughs> well, I'm glad we cleared that up. Okay, Mr. Honker. Honker. Yeah. We're interested in knowing about your Honker. system... <laughs> Honker. Yeah, Honker. Honker. Your system of tax deductions. Now, uh, say a man makes $100,000 a year. You know such a person? <laughs> No, this is, you can have a bowl of jello with it. No, no, this is not a, uh, this is a hypothetical... My wife's sister isn't married. Well, no, this is not a real person. It's a hypothetical... You could meet my wife. I don't care. No, this is a hypothetical, not a real person. Oh, not real. Hypothetical. Yes. Hollywood here. Yeah. Nothing's real. No, no, no. no. I'll make believe nothing. No, but I, I'm just getting on Did to you. You know that Warner Roland is not Chinese. <laughs> Most people were aware of that, Nothing sir, I think. real. Nothing no, well, real. he played a Chinese gentleman. Oh, I see. I see. Yes. Uh, sir, with your system of taxes, if a man makes $100,000 a year, Unreal. what, w what yeah. would he ordinarily pay to the government in taxes? Well, if he's a salaried employee and he earns $100,000 a year, he would pay 90000 of those $100,000 to his government. And with the Heinker method, how much would he pay? $1.40. <laughs> Oh, well, you have to do a lot of computing and figuring. Is that allowed? Well, we're in court about it now. <laughs> you think you'll win? Oh, we have a great chance of losing. <laughs> <laughs> Sir, Mr. Mr. Uh, uh, H Hank Hanker. No, Hanker. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> Philip J. Hanker, you are dishonorably discharged from the army of Hanker. Hanker. Thank you. Well, certainly. Nice oh, to meet Hanker. you, Mr. Hanker. Hanker, that's my name. You sure it's Hanker now? Yeah, I'm positive it's Hanker. Because I know it's very confusing. A Hanker. Call me Phyllis. <laughs> I think I think you mean Philip, don't you? What's in the book? Philip. <laughs> Philip. I knew you couldn't be Philip. You don't look at all like a Philip. No. I'm wearing so, a man's watch. How you sure I couldn't be Philip? No. <laughs> Sir, it's always been stated that you can't beat death and taxes. You've obviously done very well with this dollar forty at beating yes. taxes. Yes, doing very well with taxes. I would like to know, sir, what unusual... A dollar forty, is that possible? You, yes, you can't beat death and taxes, you well, know that. we're working on death now. You can go on... To... <laughs> well, there is a death involved yes. in that a little bit. Yes. All right, sir, yes. what... Uh... <laughs> Besides, sir... I'm interested in how you get to this figure of dollar forty. You are. You're interested. I'm very you're fascinated. You're some nosy body, you know. <laughs> Trying to find out how you get to this dollar forty. What unusual deductions do you take? Well, aside from the nation of Romania, you, I deduct. Wait, wait. Just, <laughs> you, you deduct the nation of Romania? Well, nobody's claiming them. <laughs> That's true. Right. No, but beside Romania. I send them cottage cheese and like magazines. <laughs> I'm sure they're, very they're wonderful. They're gypsies. They're happy people. I see. They depend on me for solemnity. I see. Yeah. And you can send them that. Right. Well, sir, besides, besides all that, what do you deduct? I deduct my wife. Well, everybody deducts their wife as an exemption. Not as an exemption. Well, as a deduction. Not as a deduction. Then what? As a depreciation. <laughs> You depreciate your I wife? I depreciate my wife. Well, how can well, you, you do... You depreciate your car, don't you? It's different. It gets though. a wrinkle in the fender, your wife gets a wrinkle in the nose, you deduct... No, you can't. No, you can do that. No, I don't think Listen, so. Listen, I'm deducting $300. For what? For my wife's diet. She lost 30 pounds. I'm taking off $300 for my wife's diet. That's $10 a pound, sir. Right. Can you take off ten? You think ten dollars a pound is out of line? A dollar seventy-five for the price of ground chuck? You think ten dollars for the price of what? No, well, that's... the woman. It's a lovely thing. Yes. Listen, the government is depriving me of thirty pounds of happiness of clutching. Where is it? It's not there. I see. Well, that's not the government. I'm clutching nothing. Well, that's not the government. One last question, Mr. Mr. Uh, Han, Han, hold it, Honker. Ho hold it. Hold it. Hold it. Uh oh. <laughs> Philip J. Hinker. This court finds you guilty of murder in the first degree. It's Hinker. Hinker is the name. <laughs> and I'd better talk to the fugitive about getting my own show now that I've murdered him. Oh, you're going to have a baby. Relax. Have a pickle and buy some baby magic lotion. A special protection for newborns against skin irritation. Look, baby magic here. 
other leading lotion here. I've been dying to show this to someone. See? Baby magic protects longer, even when baby's wet. Oh, they love their baby powder, too. Of course. It's by Menon. If you took a shower every hour, you'd never need to worry about perspiration odor. That's not practical. But if you use Menon push-button deodorant daily, you can get deodorant protection almost like a shower every hour. Men and push button dries on contact, and the only thing that touches you is protection itself. So it's great for the whole family. If you use men and push button daily, you can get deodorant protection almost like a shower every hour. One of the great singing stylists of our day. Vic Damone. Right. <laughs> They're writing songs of love But not for me A lucky star's above But not for me With love to lead the way I've found more clouds of gray than any Russian play could guarantee. I was a fool to fall and get that way. I ho, alas, and also. Day. Although I can't dismiss the memory of her kiss, I guess she's not. Decide to roll along somewhere far away off and make it snappy. Oh, how I long to be the man I used to be. Fascinating rhythm. Fascinating rhythm. Fascinating rhythm. On me. Stop picking on me. Sip your tea The memory of all that No, no They can't take that away From me The way your smile just beams The way you sing off key 
the way you haunt my dreams. No, 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 they can't take that away from me. We may never, never meet again on that bumpy, bumpy roads of love. And I'll always, always keep a memory of the way you hold your life. The way we dance till three The way you changed my life No, 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 they can't take that away from me No Take that away, they can't take that away The way you wear your hat The memory of all that The way you hold your knife The way you changed my life Same pretty good. Hey, you gotta go play basketball now. You better suit up. Okay, here, you wanna sing a tune? Yeah, Mel 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 Melancholy Baby. Come to me, man. No, 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 forget it, David. <laughs> Thanks, man. Take them off. And now, the Harlem Globetrotters versus the Palace Dribblers in the big game for 65. Some of the dribblers, dribblers are younger, but here they are. From the United States Navy, where he learned to throw a basketball through portholes, Tim Conway. <laughs> the famous Italian singing guard who once scored 26 consecutive baskets with a pizza, Vic Damone. Martha! <laughs> knows what to do with the basket and should be playing in a supermarket, Carl Reiner. <laughs> and the, caught by the oldest guard in the world who's too old to be forward, the 2,000-year-old man, Bell Brooks. I'm coming. Our star center who always gets the jump, mostly on the cops, David Jansen. And, and their opponents, the Harlem Globetrotters. Now this is Dick Kutrow's courtside set for the opening tip-off. Connie Hawkins and Mel Brooks jumping. Referee is Riley Pitbull. Trotters control. Bobby Joe Mason, everything, being guarded by Mel Brooks. Foul on Brooks. Mason at the line for one free throw. Mason sinks it, and the Trotters lead one up. Tim Conway with the ball now, weaving his way down court, lays it in. Two on dribblers. <laughs> Foul being called now on David Jansen, metal arc lemon at the line. Two on dribblers. Good. Score is tied. 2 2. No books. Much. 
in two years on television. Thank you very much. This portion of the Hollywood Palace has been brought to you by Men and Push Button. With Men and Push Button daily, you can get deodorant protection, almost like a shower every hour. And by Sunbeam, makers of the only lady shaver with a built-in light. The Lady Sunbeam Electric Shaver for the ultimate in feminine grooming. In two weeks.